Today we are going to multiply a number that has a decimal in it by another number that has a decimal in it using models. Okay, so you'll see here that we have a hundredths grid just like we did the other day. Okay, and we're going to multiply 5 tenths times 5 tenths. Now, the interesting thing about this is you're not going to just, you've got to have to color in 5 tenths groups of 5 tenths. So what that really means is you're coloring in part of this because a decimal is less than a whole. So I'm going to kind of show you how that works, okay? So 5 tenths on a hundredths grid, remember, is a whole row because 10 hundredths makes a tenth. So if I'm going to color in 5 tenths, I'm going to color in 5 whole rows. So you'll see 5 tenths going this way in yellow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are my 5 tenths. And then you'll see 5 tenths colored in the opposite direction in green. Now this is important. The reason that we're going in the opposite direction is because the answer is where these two numbers cross. Because I'm not finding 5 groups of 5 tenths, I'm finding 5 tenths of 5 tenths, which means I'm finding a part of 5 tenths. So my answer is actually going to be smaller, and it's only going to be where those two numbers cross. So let me show you what I mean here. Right here, where the yellow and the green cross, is my answer inside this square I just drew. So if I want to know what my answer is, I have to count up the hundredths inside of this area. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So this whole area where those 25 hundredths are colored in, where the yellow and the green overlap, that is what my answer is. Um, so I'm going to come over to the blue sticky note and I'm going to write my answer in there. Now remember, it's 25 hundredths, not 25 holes. So if you write 25, that's not correct because that's 25 ones. It's 25 hundredths. So you'd have to write 25 hundredths or you'd have to, oops, sorry guys, or you'd have to write it with the 25 in the hundredths place. Remember, the hundredths place is two places after the decimal. So 25 hundredths, okay? Or you could write it this way without the zero in the front. It's going to be the same thing. Okay, so that is my answer. All right, and hopefully we remember back from the beginning of the year, this should sort of make sense because if I multiply something by one, my answer is going to stay the same. If I multiply it by more than one, it's going to go up. And if I multiply something by less than one, it will go down. So since um, 5 tenths is less than 1, my answer is actually going to be smaller than the original number. All right, so let's move on and try another one. All right, so over here we have 2 tenths times 4 tenths. So I have a decimal, and I'm multiplying it by a decimal. This is a number smaller than 1, so my answer is actually going to get smaller. So I'm going to find my answer where these two numbers cross. So my 2 tenths are going this way, two whole rows. So two rows of hundredths make 2 tenths. All right, and then in the opposite direction, I'm going to draw my 4 tenths, which would be my 4 rows of hundredths. And where they cross is where my answer is. So my answer is only going to be in this little rectangle where those two numbers cross. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight hundredths, okay? So eight hundredths is gonna be my answer. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to write it with the eight in the hundredths place, remember. Okay, the hundredths place is two places after the decimal. If you have to make yourself a place value chart to remind you, please do that. Or I could write it without the zero in the front, but I have to have the decimal, and the eight has to be two places after the decimal to show eight hundredths, okay? So that's my answer. Um, now remember what I said before. If you're multiplying by something less than one, your answer is going to go down because you have less than one of it. So you don't have a whole. Okay, we all know that like if you're doing something like, I don't know, four, whoops, not very good at writing with a jam board, four times one, the answer is going to be four. It's going to stay the same, right? You have one group of four. If you were to do something like four times 
say 2, you have two groups of 4, so your answer is going to get bigger because you have more than 4. Okay, so what that means is if you multiply something by, multiply 4 by something less than 1, like let's say 1 tenth, okay, your answer is going to be smaller than 4. It's going to go down. All right, so in that instance, your answer would be 4 tenths, which is less than 4. All right, so just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you're doing this and you're multiplying decimals because it might seem strange, but if you're multiplying by something that is smaller than 1, your answer is going to go down, okay? And remember that your answer, if you're using the models, is where the two colors cross. So what I'd like you to do is to go ahead and try this one using the um, grids that you have at home in the plastic sleeve with your whiteboards or your white uh, dry erase markers and make a model of this. Remember one number going one way, one number going the other, and the answer is where they cross. Okay, and then when you're done with that, I'd like you to go try the problem of the day.